Sophia from Staycation Adventures. I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'm doing a quick guide of the Gower. I used to come here all the time as a kid. I have so many fond memories. The weather isn't looking too great. It was great when I left this morning as per usual Welsh weather and it's kind of clouded over now. So if you can see. But I'm going to take you on a quick guide, places where you can stay and things you can do when you're planning your next vacation. Let's go. So, why should you come to the Gower? Well, not only was it awarded the UK's first area of natural outstanding beauty in 1956, it's got 19 miles of coast, so it's a peninsula, it's got fabulous beaches and mountains and wonderful things to come and walk on, play at, it's fantastic. There are also 12, over 1,200 archaeological sites from castles to Iron Age forts. Just some fantastic things to come and see and do. Here I am at my, one of my top picks. This is Rosilli Bay. You've got three miles of lovely coastline. There's even a little shipwreck down there somewhere for you to come and explore. There's uh, lots of walks for you to do because it's a National Trust site. Uh, you can even walk down to the Worm's Head, which is uh, wonderful but please if you do that please check the tide times you don't want to have to be rescued uh, there's normally swathes of sunflowers all all in the fields over there uh, but unfortunately we're a bit too early for it this year uh, so some reasons why you might want to come is it's got wonderful uh, as you can see behind me, wonderful sea, wonderful beach for you to come and explore. Uh, it's been voted Europe's third best beach and the UK's number one dog friendly beach. It's, yeah, it's absolutely glorious here. I don't think this is doing it justice. If you do plan on heading down to the beach, I just want to note that it is quite a steep walk at points, uh, so it's definitely not wheelchair friendly. Um, maybe push chair friendly if you fancy um, carrying it up a few of the steps, but if you've got maybe older children who are happy to walk, I'm sure this would be a great place for you to come. So I'm here at Port Island Beach. Uh, this beach is just under a mile long, mostly sand, but there is some rock down here. Maybe if you want to go and look to some rock uh, but I have so many fond memories of coming here as a kid myself, uh, which is partially why I chose it. But I also chose it because it's such a family-friendly beach. Uh, it's, uh, there's like a, a slip all the way down so that you can bring wheelchairs and push chairs if you did want to bring those down. I like the fact it's just under a mile long, uh, so if you've got kids and you don't know that there's not miles and miles and miles for them to be, it's just this show. Um, it's also lifeguarded, I think you can see the hut here, uh, between May and September, which might give you some more peace of mind. I love as well that the sea is so calm here, I hope you can see that. It's really, really calm and quiet. And yeah, I also chose it because there's a car park really close by. You don't, no steps to get here or anything. Um, there's also somewhere to grab ice cream and food and there's a shop as well to grab buckets and spades, that kind of thing. But yeah, I love this place. This is Paul Dynam. Oh, I also want to point out that it is dog friendly, but only between these zones. I'm here at the Gower Heritage Centre. It is quite late, they have closed, um, but they've allowed me to film this little bit for you. Uh, so at the Gower Heritage Centre they have heritage history tractors, they have a water mill, uh, they can grind flour and things, grind things into flour, it's really interesting. I came back, I came here in 2019, it was fantastic, they have pottery, they have like little stalls, they even press their own cider now and they have somewhere where you can get your bike fixed which is fantastic definitely worth a visit some of the fantastic things about the Gower Heritage Centre is that there are parts inside which is great um, and it's just a short walk away from Three Cliffs Bay 
you can't park at Three Cliffs Bay. You have to like park somewhere and walk to Three Cliffs Bay. So I wouldn't say it was particularly family friendly in that uh, there aren't toilets nearby, facilities, that kind of thing. Everything is a decent walk away. So if you did want to head there, maybe take slightly older children. Um, and yeah, it's just a, just a lovely, lovely day. Fingers crossed it doesn't rain for you. In typical Wales fashion, it has started raining. I've got sun cream on, I don't have a coat. Um, and it's raining. I even checked the weather four times in the last few days to check. And it's raining. Nevertheless, we're gonna carry on. I've got some recommendations for you uh, for places to stay because Choosing where to stay is so important. Uh, it decides so many different things. Uh, I've got two hotels and two campsites for you to look at. Um, there might be fantastic holiday homes, shepherd's hut, glamping pods, those kinds of things, uh, which I've missed out. There are so many different options, but I wanted to give you the most popular ones for this location, um, which is the Gower, um, for you to choose. I don't get paid or sponsored to promote these places I've simply chosen them from either my own experiences um recommendations from friends and family uh suitable locations that kind of thing so this is where where I would choose to stay in the Gower and it's down to you to choose please let me know in the comments if I've missed anywhere really fantastic that I really should know about I'd love to know I'm here now at Bank Farm. This is a camping site. You can camp tents, you can camp caravans, uh, there are glamping pods and there are even uh, ho like uh, bungalows that you can hire as well. Uh, this is a fantastic place. I used to come here all the time as a kid, again. Uh, it's right next to Port Island Beach, so I'll, sh I'll show you the view now. The main reason I chose this campsite was because it has really fantastic facilities. There's a swimming pool. It's not open at the moment because of COVID reasons, uh, but it's, it's usually open. Uh, it's heated as well, and it's got like a cover. It's fantastic. There's tennis courts, a shop, a laundrette, a bar, restaurant, cafe, uh, they normally have entertainment as well, so that's the main reason why I chose this campsite was because it has so many fantastic facilities, it's really close to a beach and I think it's really family friendly. I'm currently at Oxford Bay campsite. I stayed here in September of 2019 uh, and had a really really lovely time. Uh, I love this place, it's really quiet and it's quite secluded, it's quite out the way, someone's got a barbecue going, <laughs> it's actually raining as well um, so I'm currently hiding under some shelter. Um, it's a wonderful place, it's really close to Oxford Bay um, so you can stay here and walk down. Um, and you've got all of the, the beach at Oxford Bay which I'll show you next and you've got the restaurants and the shop really close by. Um, so the facilities they have here are things like um, a toilet and shower block, um, swimming pool and a reception uh, and they're really really lovely at reception as well. So yeah this is my second recommendation. I'm here at the King's Head Inn in Llangenneth. Uh, it's to the west of the Gower, so it's got beautiful views of the sunset, got a lovely view down to the beach down there. It's a really, really good location if you want uh, somewhere close to the beach, um, but still quite um, secluded in a way. It's nice and quiet here. Uh, I can see the beach from here and the sea. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'll get a shot of that for you. Um, it's, it's great if you want to spend time at the beach, if you've got surfers in your family, it's a great place. It's also dog friendly, so half of the rooms are dog friendly. Um, I also really like that the uh, hotel rooms are slightly away from the restaurant, they're in like a separate outbuildings, um, so it's, it's much quieter um, than maybe other places where the restaurant's attached. Um, yeah, I'll show you around. Let's go. I'm up here by the rooms, as you can see, they're all 
brickwork and there's a lovely garden it looks absolutely gorgeous up here um, they do have family rooms they have double rooms twin rooms they even have two uh, accessible rooms with walk-in wet rooms uh, so and I love that they've got paths all the paths are kind of flat and slopey rather than uh, steps so you can get your push chairs up there get wheelchairs up there I really love this place. I definitely need to come and stay soon. One more thing to add is that all the rooms come with breakfast. So if you do need breakfast, it's just just down here, uh, d down at the pub. Uh, you can get a full cooked breakfast uh, every day of your stay. Uh, you can also get dinner and lunch there as well. It looks lovely. Just behind me is the King Arthur Hotel. This is a three star hotel it's got bed and breakfast rooms in the main bit of the hotel and then just here is some self-catering cottages uh, those ones are dog friendly the bed and breakfast rooms are not um, it's got a restaurant and a bar attached to it and it smells out of this world uh, it's a three star I know people who've stayed here and have said that it's a fantastic little stay uh, it feels really luxurious uh, but the reason why I chose this hotel was because it's right in the centre of the Gower. It's a perfect location, perfectly spotted for if you're staying here and travelling around. Uh, yeah, it's a great little find. King Arthur Hotel. I'm back home now. Unfortunately, the Welsh Club has got the best of me. But I hope that I was able to show you a few places where you can go, places you can stay, and to just help you plan and structure your next staycation to the Gower. Um, let me know in the comments if I've missed anywhere. I know there was just a quick, 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 quick little roundup of the Gower, but I'd love to know if I've missed anywhere where you think it's fantastic in the Gower. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. It really does help my channel along and it helps other people see my content too. If this video helped you plan your next vacation or give you some inspiration for your next vacation, give it a big thumbs up. I like seeing those thumbs. Uh, comment down below as well, like I said, if I've missed anything that you think is a gem in the Gower. And follow me on my social media at Staycation Adventures for inspiration and tips. I'll see you on the next adventure.